So everybody, this is my friend Jake. Say hi, everybody. Hey, hey everyone. <laughs> so Jake, tell everybody just a, a little bit about yourself. I mean, uh, I, I know you. I've known you a very long time. But for people here who don't know you, kind of say your connection. Uh, I know some of the things you do around here. Just introduce yourself. Uh, well, I'm Jake Shutt. I've done KOV for like 13 years. Uh, and then I did the internship last year. A long time ago, our family went to... Victory, yeah. yeah. 50, 50. I go to uh, Worldview now, which is a G Hop. So, yeah. awesome. So, what I wanted to talk to you about today, what I want to kind of ask you something is on February and what February twenty third, I think was the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. February twenty third, you were at an event. Can you tell us what was that event called and what was it about? Uh, so I went to this event called the Send. Uh, Where was it at? Uh, Orlando, Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah, we uh, drove, so it was. A long journey. Was it like you? Was it a group of people? Uh, that's a story in itself. Well, um, you know what? <laughs> Tell us what it is, then I'll ask you about the story again. Okay. Um, so it is... Wait, what was the question? <laughs> what was the event? What was it called? Oh, so it was Ascend. It's basically a revival for the next generation. Um, it, it's a switch from... Um, it's like a Jesus movement, kind of. It's like uh, equipping the youth to be out and go into the nations. Mm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So send equipping, equipping the youth to go out, new missions movement. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you were saying there was a little bit of story concerning the trip down there, going down there, because it was Florida and you guys drove. Mm -hmm. So maybe tell a little bit about that, yeah. that story, because I'd, I'd heard rumors of this and I wanted to make sure it was true. Uh, so <laughs> it was really cool, actually. I was originally going by myself. Uh, I was going to plan on leaving Friday. Um, and Thursday nights, we have youth group through my church, and I was there, and towards the end, we asked for, like, prayer throughout the week, what we need, and I kind of just brought it up, like, I'm going to the send, like, I need some prayer coverage because I'm going to drive, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it because I'm going to have, like, less sleep. Um, so you were planning on going Friday at some time after work, at like whatever. like 6 a.m., yeah, Okay, like and in then the driving morning. all the way there down to Orlando. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And so through youth group. Uh, How my, old are you? Uh, 20. Yeah, you could do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, once I asked for uh, just like a prayer coverage over them, I had two uh, kids say like, oh, I want to go too. Like, that's awesome. And it was about like 11 o'clock and uh, uh, we ended up leaving that night and I would say, okay, I'm going to pick you guys up at like six. Um, one kid had to ask to take off school. So around 1 a.m., uh, um, Jeremiah Jones, if anyone knows him, he... Uh, he was like, I actually can come. I took off school, and my friend actually wants to come, too. This is all, like, 1 in the morning. We're leaving at 6. And I'm like, awesome. He can come. Like, we have room. And so I was just, it was really cool to see how Jesus blessed the trip um, because I was worried about going by myself, and I ended up having three people go with me. So That's awesome. Yeah. So it was a 12-hour event, so meaning, like, an all-day kind of event. Um, but what were some, maybe tell me two or three things that really stuck out to you, that impacted you. Um, the, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, was Francis Chan came and talked, um, and what he said was super powerful. Um, he, he basically talked about how not creating our own wave, um, we get so used to, um, being concerned as, oh, this is a big event. We need you to come and move. So we create our own wave, and we're satisfied with that. Mm. And what, and what he, uh, <laughs> and what he was saying was, is we just need to focus on him. We don't need to be worrying about, oh, what's it going to look like when he comes. You know, we need to be concerned of just being in his presence and being blessed. So, man, yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that. Give me one other thing. What was something else? I mean, I know there was a lot of different worship teams and worship leaders. There were speakers yeah. and there were worship leaders. Were there any worship leaders in particular times that you were like, wow, this was really yeah. good or different or whatever? Uh, yeah. the, best, the best worship there was uh, at the very end, like the last two hours, uh, Bethel came out and yeah. sung. Um, it actually started to kind of drizzle, but there was no clouds above us. Um, and they came out and they're under like a covered stage. And um, they had no idea that it was starting to rain. Um, and they started, they opened it up with, open the floodgates of heaven, yeah. like let it rain. it rain. Yeah. And uh, throughout the song, these cloud came over us um, and it started to rain harder and harder throughout the song. And we're like, oh, this is so cool. Like it's raining. Like, oh. And uh, during that time, we didn't realize what was actually happening. But um, uh, 
it, throughout the song, it started raining harder and harder. And uh, through the live feed, there's a big there's big screens. Uh, at one point, it you couldn't even see the audience. They did a zoom out of the audience, and it was just raining so hard. And we were looking around like it's not even raining that hard. Like what? <laughs> like it was so cool. And at the very end of the song, when they finished singing, it stopped raining, and we just like we were like blown away and we looked around. I was wearing a gray shirt. This is the coolest part. I was wearing a gray shirt and I had no raindrops on me. I was completely dry. And I was like, did this really just happen like Shekinah glory, man? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so let me cool. ask you a question. You're 20 years old. You're going down with, you know, you drove however many hours over, you know, so many miles to, you know, take a weekend. You're a young person. There's things that you could do. There's, you know, what we, what some people, what practical people would say. There's better things you could do or whatever. What, why, why would you go to something like this? Why would you take out your time, your energy, your money, your gas money, your, like, why would you do something like this? Why? Um, I well originally wasn't planning on going. Um, I've heard about it. I went to uh, one thing at KC mm -hmm. over at New Year's, and they did like a uh, video of it. And I was like, oh, that's like something I'd like to do. Like that's really cool. Um, and I kind of like forgot about it entirely. And I was actually uh, uh, going to bed one night, like a week before it was happening. And I, I was on Instagram, and I think Lou Engle posted um, this video, and it it just wrecked me when I watched it. And I was like, man, like. I I, I feel led to go to this, and throughout the whole week, I'm just praying, and I'm like, I don't have the finances to do this, like the money. Um, my car is not the best. Um, it doesn't have power steering right now, actually. Um, and so I was like, I don't know if my car will make the trip, and uh, I, throughout the whole week, I just felt so um, led to go, like so blessed, like this is something I need to do. And um, also, a, a big a uh, big factor when I got there and when I realized what the actual movement was for, I was like, I really feel led to kind of wake up yeah. um, because I would go through my everyday lives and like I wouldn't even talk about Jesus half the time. Um, and I really feel like this is, it was a movement for our generation to step out of our comfort zones and start talking about Jesus wherever we Come go on. and start being the light in the world. So. so, Jake, this is what I want you to do. You just said it, and that's the thing that I was just thinking. Can you pray for us? Can you pray for us that we would have boldness, confidence, that we would be, you know, that we would have the ability to talk about Jesus, to make Jesus such a normal part of our lives, that it's just, it's like he's, stand, he's right here, that we're always talking about him. Just pray for us. Yeah. Man. Jesus, I just thank you. Mm. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I pray for the next generation, Lord, that you would light that fire in our spirits, Lord, yes, that wherever we go, people would see us, see you through us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I pray for an awakening movement, Lord, that this generation is sent, Lord, not just to the United States, but throughout the nations, Lord, that we will start touching the world like you touch the world, Lord. I just pray the book of Acts over this generation and over this body, Lord, that we will start and go, Lord. I pray for forerunners, Lord, that will go through the nations, Lord, that we will drive through the night, Lord, that we will drive through the night, that our hunger will never die for you, Lord, that that fire will always burn, that our whole bodies will be engulfed with you, Lord. Jesus. Just bless us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just wait just for one second. Just one second. Just wait. Yes, Holy Spirit, just plant that word in our hearts right now. Just let that word go deep into our hearts right now. Raise up, friends. Raise up friends who will go to the ends of the earth to proclaim your love. Raise up friends of the bridegroom that the lamb would receive the reward of his suffering. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody say thanks to my friend, Jake. <laughs>